We're going to start us at 7 p.m. And the clock did get in the day. I noticed one of the break rooms I was leaving today it wasn't moved to have it at all. In fact, I was talking with Mr. Coffey about a meeting, and I could sense the anxiety in his voice that I had an interview at 12. Well, okay, well, you know, you need to go and get your interview. I'm looking at the law clock, so it was roughly 11. Okay, I, I can take the brush off. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> I realize the law clock hadn't changed. Anyhow, that's how that goes. They don't do that by themselves. Uh, some do. <laughs> that one didn't. No, not the battery jobs, but. All the device things you get up in the morning, they're way ahead of you. It's not a long time, is it? All uh, right. Uh, number one, value payment systems. We've been talking for ever about credit card payment and should we and shouldn't we and how important is it. We've <coughs> talked to folks at banks. I've got a note here. This guy never called back. January, you and I spoke with from one bank and others and... Um, so, but it still becomes elusive, and for a very select few, it still becomes uh, very important, especially, uh, many of shouldn't say especially, it becomes very important for uh, the corporate world that wants to take care of some of their needs from afar. Um, Jackie, I asked her to come in tonight. She has something that she can share with us. So, Jackie? Oh! Uh, I've got some notes, I think, here to distribute. Sure. Did I give you the value payment stuff in the other room? I think I did. Yeah. Yeah. So I already did, did that. Did you want me to read this, or has, anyone, has everyone read we, it? They just got it a short bit ago. Let me make a copy. Anyone else need a copy? I'll throw it on the mic because Thank they're going to have them now. I don't have any more copies. You don't have any, do you, Jack? Uh, no, extras. extras no. Sorry. Okay. Uh, no. That's the next item. Please make that copy. Mm -hmm. I'll just read it out loud. Let's see. It's going to be the same amount for everybody, no matter what they're doing, dollars and five. Take American Express. Or um, they do take American Express. It's something new they just started. Two point uh, five four five percent, or or uh, or up the maximum of one seventy five, regardless. Right. The the rates for taxes are a little bit different than the utility payment. There's um, Schedule B. Do you see that, Tom? Yeah. Um, Thank you. But. Um, I guess that I guess actually according to this it looks like they're the same, but they are they have changed a little bit. Um, but for utility payments, there's a minimum charge where there isn't on the taxes. So that's the difference, I guess. There's a dollar seventy-five minimum because it goes on the amount. So with the utility payments, there are sometimes twenty dollars. <coughs> there will be a dollar seventy-five minimum charge. Uh, so what what's the jeopardy to the people? Uh, as the NSA gets this and sends it out to every company. How did we get to the NSA? Did I miss something? No, no I'm bringing it up. The National Security Administration takes, takes all this stuff and sends it out to all these companies. Takes what stuff, Tom? All the information that you send online and that goes through this. I, think first, I would so think there would be secure their name, address, server. their phone number, their account number, their fee, their debit card number, but that's gathered over a, a, a ton of transactions that people do. I don't think we have any liability or accountability when a company tells us they don't share and it's secure unless we have reason to believe otherwise. That's not a reason for us not to Well, we know they're not secure, so should we warn people about that? That's not the information that we get, that we're getting, Tom. That's the information that 
credit card companies get it. Value payments get it. That information. That's nothing that I'm going to get. I understand. I won't get their account numbers or, or anything else. So, Jackie, is it PCI compliant? I think so. It's PCI. PCI, it's, it's basically, from my, under, my limited understanding, it's the way to encapsulate uh, data so that it's protected as it moves in and out of um, accounts. Um, you know, an encryption process for, an, for encryption and protection and stuff like that. And I want to say to the extreme end to the you know ends of NSA, but uh, as a self-selecting thing, I think people are uh, understanding of e-commerce and stuff like that. But PCI is, I think, the basic standard. Um, I can double check on here. Let's see. I I can look into it. And get that. I think there's I think there's other other methods, but I think PCI is the the general. Um, I have a complete agreement standard. here. Uh, did you get a copy, Jim? I didn't distribute yeah. that. To oh, everybody. you didn't. Okay. No, I didn't know there'd be a need to. Yeah. Okay. Jackie, uh, question I have: uh, If I were if I were paying uh, my my fees or my property taxes by credit card. I would be responsible for whatever the fees are that my credit card charges, and then I would be responsible for the fee that's mentioned here. Right. It would be a convenience fee. Right. It's I'm called a convenience fee. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and basically, the reason for the added fee is with the added with the added fee, we we are not. Um, we're not the vendor. We're right. not the people who, who, who are chasing the bad credit card or anything. Right. And the other party does right. that. We don't even see the convenience fee. Right. None of those funds get into my account. Yeah. And, 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 and this is, you know, the, the person who is uh, electing mm -hmm. to make the decision to use their credit card is, you know, they have full awareness of what their fees are. and. Uh, it's certainly less than paying the, the right. penalties that they would be faced with. Mm -hmm. And uh, in many instances, uh, certainly where we're talking about uh, something like uh, planning department fees, mm -hmm. uh, they have the convenience of being able to put it on a credit card as opposed to uh, having to right. send back home to have a check and the check could be for, you know, you got to do a check for you know, thirty-nine dollars, and you know the truth mm -hmm. of the matter is, it costs more than thirty-nine dollars for somebody to process the check and get it over here and everything else. So if they're going to end up with a, but you know, this isn't for for that. This is just for utility payments. This is just for um, water, sewer. water and sewer. But well, oh. I'm, I'm already taking it for taxes, and now this is just for water and sewer. Add the water and sewer. Just the utility. Mm -hmm. Why? And, well, because that's all I. I I, that's all I collect in my office. For you to collect now? Okay. Right. That's but we could use that in the clerk's office as well if we wanted. If they don't wanted care what bill you're paying. Right. He would have to set up with his accounts with right. value. But you're talking right. about doing this in the tax receiver's office. Right. For the bills just the tax receiver. Right. Only. Or utility. We, we didn't clarify that. Right. Maybe. This is and just you, for. I'm you sorry. already use these people. <coughs> I use these people for the taxes, <coughs> for and that. now uh, we've put off the water and sewer for a while, mm -hmm. and we're getting more requests, uh, yeah. mainly because people want to be able to pay on the last day, and mm -hmm. they um, and they want to be able. They don't want to pay the ten percent penalty if they post. If it doesn't go by post margin, mm -hmm. we go by received by, yeah. which is something that's been changed in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. So I'm finding a lot of people are calling me last minute. How late are you going to be there? Can, now there's an option. If you want to go online, you can pay till midnight tonight, pay your dollar seventy-five minimum or two point four five percent of your bill, depending on the amount. So anything over seventy-five eighty dollars, they're gonna pay a little bit more, but it's still really reasonable for a utility bill. I think on the receiving end, we sometimes get nervous although paying by credit card, buying online, automatic uh, electronic fund transfers have been mm -hmm. going on for decades. Uh maybe not decades, a long time. Just for the record and for, for the purpose of discussion, have you ever had a problem with someone using a check? An e-check? A check. Oh, a check? Paper check. Out of my check you book, I come in and give it, it to you, has it and then we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Occasionally. So should we stop taking paper checks? No. <laughs> Do we have a fee for bounce check? Yes, $20. Okay. 
Jackie, I just want to go back to something I asked. I did find in the Schedule B convenience fee pricing schedule mm -hmm. security for PCI, which was comforting. Mm -hmm. The other part to it is, as it's listed here, it also seems that it's waived. So that's right. So that's another see. thing that I think is important. There is no cost to us at all for this right. for their service. Um, they're going to set up a, a web page for us or a link on our on our site. Um, so I can advise people to go to the town of Plattsburgh, go, we probably should put it on the main page, but somewhere, go to the town of Plattsburgh, department, whatever, and go ahead and just, um, it walks them right through. I gave you an example here that shows you basically they would, there's a drop down. Um, it's only going to say utility here. I don't think it'll say tax payment because that's a different link. Um, and um, it's just a matter of them putting in their information, which is secure. And either before it accepts it, it's going to tell you what the fees are, the convenience fee, and then it goes on. Now the next day, I will get a report that shows who who has paid, and then it's we have to work out the details as far as how that's going to get posted. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Jack, did you say for tax purposes, credit cards are being used? Yes. Okay. What percentage of the amount of money taken in the credit card? Well, let's see. My right now, my warrants what? Um, Nine million something, and I've taken in about forty thousand in credit card. So, about 30, 35 transactions. So, I think that this is going to probably start slow, but I believe it's it's going to grow very fast with utility payments because the dollar seventy five minimum is so reasonable that I think people are just going to, with a price of a stamp of 50, yeah. 50 cents. And people are spending less when they go to the ATM machine mm -hmm. to take money out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, personally, I think this is just an additional mm -hmm. uh, thing in the portfolio of services. I think this is a, this is a great thing. And you already have some experience right. with the company. The whole idea is for the convenience for the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. it's, it will be a little more work in my office, but it, it, the whole idea is to oh, make it kind of... a little more work? Just it's more work through. because... I have to watch everything. I have once I get a report, then I have to make. I have to watch. I have a merchant account that mm -hmm. I consider. So the money goes in there. So I I don't post the payment till I receive the money. Only these charges go in that account. That account. So it's an exclusive. It's account. an exclusive okay. account for a credit card. It's called a merchant account. Once those funds are there, then I go in and I post the payment. Once I know I have my money, then I go online and I transfer my money from my merchant account. To whatever to my checking account, it's 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 bookkeeping. Is what what it is. I don't want to say work, but it's bookkeeping because you have to you have to watch. What would happen if on Tuesday you come in, you get a an email, however it comes to you, that uh, Bernie Bassett used his credit card to pay his water bill that night, mm -hmm. and then you go to the merchant account and you watch and you watch, and Friday comes and next Monday comes. It doesn't get posted. What happens? I've never had that problem. What? Uh, it, okay. The money comes. It's it's almost guaranteed. Once it's accepted, it's it's almost guaranteed to us. Yeah. If you receive it's notification, take two or three days. You, yes. if you yes. receive right. notification, the money should be in the in right. the list. It probably would be denied if you went and tried to pay it and you didn't have the funds available. If you're using your debit card. Now, this is not just credit cards. If you could use a debit card. Mm -hmm. Or you can use an electronic check. And you get an electronic report yes. that next morning sure. that tells you this transaction mm -hmm. took place. Right. You right. will get you will get the verification of the funds about maybe three days another later. day or yes. two days or yes. three days later. So that's where I say the work comes in because you gotta watch it. I, I think I think the, it probably is a higher uh, level of guarantee that the money will be there with that form of payment mm -hmm. than obviously the mm -hmm. paper check that we chase people. Right. Um, I know when I look at my account, I will see pending charges. So right. those are the ones I swiped it to make the payment, and then when it goes into an actual charge in my account, is when it's actually right. shown up in your merchant account sure. because now they transfer the funds. That's it's what right. happens when I use my debit card yeah. as well. Takes yeah. a day. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I think it's a, a nice convenience for the public is, is what it is. If, if they want to call on the 31st of the month and, they, and they're panicking because they forgot to pay the water bill for $1.75 or 2.45% depending on the bill, it's, a, it's certainly an option for them to pay it. I think of all the, the taxes that you collect, your warrant, 
for the few. Uh, I couldn't do the mental math that fast, what percentage it is. Uh, it's pretty I, small. It's a small percentage. It's either five or half of five or something. It's small. Yeah. Yeah. But for those 33 people, mm -hmm. it's nice they could do that. And I, and I find that it's a lot of the same people. I'm sure. That are, that's how they do their business. Yeah. Is, is that's I'm surprised it isn't more. Um, I know there's a, a restaurant locally that, well, sort of where they won't take cash. Well, that is, that is coming. They won't take that. Yeah, that they is just don't want a that. bartender. Mm -hmm. no. Cash on hands, no good. It's I think, well, I, I, the other thing that Jackie brought up, though, that I think is an important thing is to restructure our website to make that a more prominent feature mm -hmm. so people understand that. You yeah, know, it's kind of hidden where it is now. You know, it, it, in general, mm -hmm. you know, there's many layer and web pages. We can get into all the conversation, but web pages and the dynamics of them have changed. Mm -hmm. Services like those need to be very up in front, a mm -hmm. storefront. You know, th this is what we're providing you, um, so that people realize it's there. They're going to go search for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll just there's a few details that because it's uh, the utility versus the taxes that we really need to to discuss and I think that would have to be a different meeting with Pat and Marsha from the Water and Sewer Department who puts penalties on as far as when things are going to get posted. Pat thinks they should be posted the day I get the report so that next day I should post it before I get my money. I'm a little uncomfortable about putting putting When someone gives you a something. check, do you post it that day? Yes. So if the check bounces, right. I you reverse the same payment. Issue. And the chance of check bouncing are a lot higher. A liar, I know. Believe. So it's, it's it mentally I have to, of, yeah, I have, mm -hmm. I have to get that out of my head then. Really that makes sense. Do they put on the bill, I don't recall ever seeing it, that it may be paid by going online too or something? We, we can put things on well, the bill. Right, they haven't done that yet. So because we haven't that. done it yet. Put that in right. Daglo Orange. Because right. mm -hmm. it's no good having yeah. it if nobody uses it. But I wouldn't do it the first week. Right. Well, we started with the credit cards and it's working and it's, we've given it a few years now. and. So mm -hmm. I think it's time to, to move to the utility. What's the average, uh, you know, utility bill if they're coming in? Mm. Good oh. question. Th that ranges, Tom. The well, minimum is twenty dollars and fifty nine dollars, and then it depends if it's a business, if it's a residential. Yeah. I mean, that's those numbers so some are all over the place. Paying uh, twenty four dollars just to do it. Right, and they and that's an option. They don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. It's only an option. I mean, it, when you get down to to the last day, do you want to pay ten percent or do you want to pay two point four five percent? That's like when, I, when, people, when I when I pay my credit card, I do it direct They drive their car. Right. They drive their car. I can and mail it in to come and pay that a direct deposit for my credit and, union. And then we've got their kids so. who want to put it on a credit card. Right. Yeah. Because it's it, 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 it's up to the uh, taxpayer. They don't have to, or the customer for the utility. They don't have to use this. I mean, it's strictly it's an option. It's another way of payment, mm -hmm. and I think we need to give them, let them decide if, if it's right. worth it. Um, I I know I I paid extra fees in a hurry, so um, so in a, like I paid my credit card before and paid I think ten dollars or something like that, so I could hurry up and get it done before I have this huge payment. So I paid those fees before, and um, I have no problem with it. So mm -hmm. I think the issue is if Jackie's willing to do it. It's and another step for a few that she gets. Um, I don't know why we'd be in the way of it. It says that per transaction on um, property tax payments, you have 2.5%. Then you have some just uh, like piece of consumer debit cards is 395. So that's the that's minimum and maximum. Well, that's what I was saying. The difference, Tom, with the property taxes versus the utility. Mm -hmm. The property tax, if you're using your debit card, it is a flat 395. But they're not doing that with the utility payments. The utility payment, it's a flat dollar seventy-five. So these are flat rates here. Right. For the for the property tax. Mm -hmm. But if you use it, that's for for uh, debit cards, electronic checks. Right. Minimum credit card says debit card convenience fee is three ninety-five. That's for taxes. That's a minimum. Right. Then you add the, the, if it's over over the amount, then it's two point four five percent. Of whatever. No, if you're using your debit card, it's just a flat three ninety five. If you're using your credit card, it's two point four five percent. Or if you're using an electronic check, it's a dollar seventy five. That's for taxes. Okay, so for the other non ones, it's, that that is eliminated. It's just right. however much it is, it's going to be two point four five percent. But for you, for water, unless it's less than that, and it's going to be, I mean, less than it's more than uh, less than dollar seventy five. It's going to be dollar seventy five. Right. 
So for utility payments, it's a flat $1.75. So anything up over $75, you're going to pay 2.45%. It's, it's pretty basic, pretty simple. Which I think is fair. I, I really do. I know the city does this for their water store payments. And I think their fees are very similar. Very similar. So. They use the same... They, I don't know that they use value payments, but they use, um, they accept credit cards mm -hmm. for utility payments. What about other municipalities? Is this fairly common? Yes. yes. I know Beatman Town is doing it. Um, I don't know if Skyler Falls does it. Do you know of it? I don't know. The county does it now? The county does it now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this will be at least just one step. Behind, you know, what the best balls. <laughs> what the new things are. <laughs> think how I feel. Think. <laughs> Technology. Do you have any other questions regarding this? Um, we could do a pretty simple resolution for Monday to authorize us to enter into an agreement with value payment. Then everybody's comfortable, and knows what to do. We have no liability. Well, that's what I would like Jim to read this. I'll take a look for it. Page yeah. and basically, it's, it's, it's pretty cut and dry, Jim, but uh -huh. I would like you to read it right, before sure. we sign it. Before we, this. Bernie signs it. And, um, okay. yeah. and if, uh, should something arise, you could let me know. I can ask questions. The, the, question, the thing that I, ha I have is that, according to this sheet, April 1st, um, and it says between April 1st and April 20th, and December 10th, in January 4th, um, there'll be a three or four week delay if we happen to send our paperwork in during that time. So if we can get this in very quickly, then we can get it moving and probably up and running in two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we could have so it as a resolution as fast as Monday. Yeah, and we could have it up and, and running by May 1st. And away you go. Right. If we wait till in the middle of April and carry this on, then we're going to have to wait another week. Bring it into another one. Anyone else have any questions? I got a question of Rick. Is, are you looking at this stuff for the, for the, the uh, clerk's office? I haven't, no. But we've talked about it. We've talked about it. Uh, I, talked, I talked when I was down in New York City, but that's as far as I went. I talked to uh, BAS about it. Mm -hmm. And that's what BAS uses is the value payments, the yeah. same one, yes. So you can use them through BAS or use it direct? It's actually nicer through BAS. And with my taxes, it's through BAS, and it's actually nicer than me doing it through value payments. Because then why would you go through BAS to do Because I, BAS doesn't have my utility program, Harris does. Oh, okay. Now I understand. Mm -hmm. well, when I was generating funds, I was going to BAS. Because, see, I, I'm going to have to manually go in and post those payments. But if we were automated with BAS, then I it would just be a data set that I would go in and do, mm -hmm. like I do with my taxes. Mm -hmm. You so, use BAS now, don't you? So yeah. for Rick, it would be it'll even be simpler because it's it's a matter of them syncing it through for him. Because they have software. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we didn't buy that extra software with Harris with, when we when we purchased. Other than you having a separate account for this, is there any reason to buy that with Harris now? No. Not really. It's kind yeah. of good not to have yeah. everything with Harris, too, I think. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> their, their system, Harris to BAS, is, is night and day. Yeah. Yeah. BAS works well, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, it does. It's it so is. simple. Even when the men come in, you can communicate with them. Well, there. It's so simplified, but if you have a problem, that they can fix it yeah. on the spot. You don't have to wait Ooh. two weeks. Harris is a nightmare to get things fixed. It's, no. it, it's worth the... Well, the customer service with BAS is, mm -hmm. is, is fantastic. So, Rick, I know that you said that you had talked to some people in New York City. Is there a, a timetable for consideration to adopt it in your office? No, I just have to get back with BAS to, to upgrade the system. But the only thing, I, I don't know how, and I, I talked with Jackie on this, if, if you're going to do it, how are we going to do with DEC and stuff to process their payments if somebody wants to take a credit card because that money is swiped out of the checking account? So you're going to another, 
Yeah. I guess you'd probably have to have a merchant account, and then when it clears, <coughs> put that in your checking, and then give it to to uh, DEC. But that's probably also something BAS would help us with. You got to believe well, they there use was a it. couple of things. Yeah, yeah. Well, they yeah. probably have it installed because we don't process. BAS has the capability of doing DEC stuff on on their software rather than DEC stuff. So maybe that would be the way to go um, and process everything with BAS and not and have use three DC. different systems here. They probably have something that interfaces with it. So all you do it is one, on one system and then it gets, you know, adopted into the other one. That sounds smart too. Same thing with DEC and Harris. There's not a big difference. But yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yes. So, well, um, so there's no cost to set it up, no cost to operate it. Let's get BAS it. in and, um, you know, yeah. talk to me. Yeah, because with, with that, Rick, then they have the dog licenses online So with the BAS. So they could actually go online, do their dog license, and um, and use their card at the same mm -hmm. time if they want it, or just do an electronic check or whatever, however they want to do it. And that's all into the BAS system. So there's, there's, there's a lot you can do with that. Yep. But, Sounds like we're we got a plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That'll Anyone else have anything else for Jackie? Otherwise, we'll do as indicated. Resolution from Monday to enter into an agreement. Uh, is there a term? Is it a year? It's a two-year term, and um, renewal at one year automatically. But if we wanted to cancel, we we can let them know in thirty days. 30 either, day part. either part. Either part. Either yeah. part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I ask. Thank you for coming in. Okay, so yeah. Thank really you. Appreciate that. Thank you. This is just so much easier. I can't represent these things. You do it, so yeah. it's think, good to hear. I think it'll be. I think it'll work out good. Um, I think everybody will be happy to have that option. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then we want to talk with uh, Marsha and see about how to communicate that in the envelope of the bills. Right. Well, that's just a little message they can put on the bills. Yeah, they can take that. Um, we just have to work out the details on how they're going to, with penalties and... Well, like I said, we might do it a little bit before the advertising mm -hmm. too. Yes. We have to sit down and figure out how we're going to do that. But um, they think that all can be worked out. That's just small details. Sure can. Okay? Thank all right. You. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Yeah. Thanks, Jay. Uh, number two, request for promotion of Kevin Keene. I think I gave everyone everything you need on that. Uh, Kevin's promotion... Uh, is documented by a letter from uh, Scott as well as one from uh, Paul. I uh, guess our committee has talked with them about that. Or if you want to add anything to this, um, well, this was the the plan right along is to move people into slots where um, where they're capable and where they can fill it. This particular person fills. A need that we don't have anybody else at this point in time that's that's that extra in, and um, it's considered a possible uh, way to keep it maybe a little bit longer. Um, well, this is going to be subsequent to the retirement of Joe, right? Yes. We're not doing a promotion in the absence of that. That's my understanding. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't hear that. Which I don't know his date, but that's not too long either. And he is taking his lump sum benefits, so there's no protracted uh, journey to his actual retirement date. Uh, in his letter, he does not request a date. No. Well, if we didn't do it that way, we'd be adding to the staff. I'm not in favor of that. We're adding to the staff? We no. would be if we didn't By do it as a result of Joe's retirement. In my mind, it's... it's. I don't quite understand that. Person leads, promoting the person, that's not, that's not another person. Let, let me say it another is. way. If we do a promotion before Joe's retirement, well, it's a promotion, it's not adding. As long as they're not backfilling his current title, I just don't know. There's fewer people that will work in the department. So my concern the retirement, is, yeah. yeah. My concern is we have an agreement that you know people are working in this year and they're not they're not getting raises. Okay, 
So promotions effectively are a way of bringing raises. And it, it's one thing to do this because you have a person who's retiring and now you're filling that slot. But if you're promoting and the person is not retiring, that's a little different. And that needs to be that needs to be clarified. I, I don't see it that way. I, I, I believe that uh, when a person can be promoted to the particular position, whether or not the other person is already uh, gone, because we're not creating another position. But I, I think the, the concern is, I'll, I'll say it in a positive way, with a retirement, we see the need to make some changes to keep our staff at a level we can meet our needs. Without a retirement, what Marty, I think, is saying, is a promotion is a way to give that individual a raise when nobody else got one. So I guess we'd have to go back and say, you know, why do we need the promotion? Uh, but I do think it's on the heels of the retirement. So it may make that question. Well, I think, it's a, I think it's a split of need versus necessity. You know, do we need the promotion or is the promotion necessar necessary? You know, for what's going on title-wise, performance-wise, mm -hmm. etc. So. And I think there's some of that because Kevin's tech skills are very good mm -hmm. and we've used them where we could, but this would enable him to uh, and, Tom, and Tom touched go on further it. I just because I, I was on the committee for a while and, and Kevin was the topic of discussion before while I was still on the Waters for Committee, Kevin does have a set of a set of skills that we are we are lacking. We don't have anybody who's good with GIS mapping. He brings that expertise to the water and sewer department, and that has a lot of value to the department. Uh, he's also interested in, in moving on. This promotion would give us an opportunity to keep him for a while longer, maybe finish up some projects that he's gotten started. I guess the board has to ask itself, is it, is it worth throwing a little bit more money at him to keep him for a while longer, or do we just say, thank you for your time and let him go? Do, does anyone know what his current title is? Maintenance one is one. He's a maintenance one. one. He's got a BA from Plattsburgh State mm -hmm. in Ecology and Environmental Sciences. What do you make at, at BS? He, uh, he also has uh, he also has gone got acquired all the licenses needed exactly for in fact more than he's valuable. He's, what, he's, what he's, he for the he made park, a lot with, more which is not true of all the employees. Yeah. No, I, even, I agree. He's valuable with the with the raise to maintenance two. He's not going to be making what he can make out of here, but he likes working for the town of Plattsburgh. So again, uh, you know, it's 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 a bone, but it's a, it's it's the least we can do to keep him for a while longer. Yeah. So are you saying that currently in his current position, he's not using the skill sets at his current level, even though he has them? He he is he using. Is. He is using. Them. Okay, so more than anything, it's compensating him for. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because he's he's got a he's got a tentative position that he can move to. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, and, and he likes working for the town of Plattsburgh. Yeah, just trying to un understand the, the landscape of, of, mm -hmm. of yeah. that part of it. And and honestly, I don't remember Scott ever saying to us that he came to Scott and said, "If I don't get a promotion, I'm leaving." Right. It no. hasn't been it hasn't it's been that like kind that of, of strong arming. It's just this is this is an a valued employee, and you know we're 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 getting him cheaply as it is. Well, I think there's more to able to retain him for just a little bit more. I think there's more that they would like him to do that he's capable of, but he's got to get a title upgrade in order to do it. Yes, that's also mm -hmm. part of it. That's you know we got to watch out with some soaps. And that's why I don't see where it makes a whole lot of difference whether we promote him now or, yeah. or, or wait until somebody leaves because what, what are we trying to do? Cut down the department another another person? We've we've already done that. My, my point, I guess, I, I, I'll just make it again. Uh, I think when these kinds of letters come before us, they should have a date in there. You want to make a, you want to, you want to promote somebody. When do you want to make the promotion? I, I think the expectation, Marty, is that the resolution would take place next week. But again, we need a date for that to happen for the resolution. So, you know, I will find that out. The date that he would like that uh, to take place. Yeah, I guess he'd preferably. <coughs> mm -hmm. We usually do the first full pay period after something, so right. it comes out clean. Right. And okay. the other thing that I'm concerned about, 
that I that was the point that I raised was if we have a person who is like an MEO2 and that person is going out of retirement but they are not really leaving our employee, mm -hmm. they are going to be drawing that MEO2 rate and they're going to draw that rate till October. I mean this is the way they go. And now you want to promote somebody to MEO2. I mean, we have to understand, if you promote that person to MEO2, you're going to have, you know, you're going to have two people functioning in that, in, in, in that MEO2 uh, category. Uh, you're, you're... You're talking about the salaries you're, of your chart. Open. Your chart for how many people you have in those various categories you know, is perhaps now going to be skewed. And maybe you have to because even though one person is drawing the pay, they're not, they're not working. And you're saying, i got to have this person over here. They've got to step in to do that job. I've got to pay them at that rate to do that. Um, but you'd have to create, if we, if we only are approved for two MEO, MEO2s, and that would be the third, you can't do it until you get a new position. That's the point. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. Yep. You need to. I mean, those are all the questions that we get answered out of uh, yep. the budget office. It's it's not without its complications. Um, this is a, in the form of a draft resolution. Later, anyone have any other comments, questions on the topic? If not, my sense is we'll see it with some clarity and a particular date. Um, the next item is the retirement of Diane. Um, she was a little concerned. One of the things you'll see in her letter is her retirement date is October 12th. Um, but she will, her last day of work will be April 1, uh, which I teased her a little. It was an April Fool's joke. Um, using her time uh, in the model that Marty just uh, was talking about. Um, but we need to act on that at our next regular meeting, so this will, uh, this is out. Um, we all know Diane, you could probably say it, I'm sure you can visualize it, and even when I threatened, she wasn't going to hear about anything being done. Uh, certainly I will take her out to lunch, Pat and I, or something. Um, a lot of years of service in the town of Plattsburgh, a lot of history. Um, she's anticipated this move for a while. Um, the other thing that I think is important that's probably not in there anywhere is not our intention to seek a replacement for her. Um, we initially looked at wanting to get uh, upgrade the position. The town's grown. Fiscal issues are different than they were when Diane was hired. Remember, not that many years ago, the you know, the account books were kept under the mattress of the uh, budget officer's bed at night, and the checkbook probably in the, the, the drawer. Um, we wanted to bring some expertise on and have some overlap, and also allow the expertise to go some different directions without taking the whole operation on. But that's over. That will happen. Um, we will reduce that staff down to three. Uh, for the balance of the year, well, she's in transition, but even after her retirement, that is not our intention to fill the position. Bernie? Um, when people retire, is there any limit to the amount of time they can earn? Whatever by agreement they're allowed to accrue. And I well, well, I guess that by agreement are they allowed to, could you accrue like a couple of years? Um, no. No, there's maximum. There's what the, is no, that the question? There are a number of hours. What's the maximum? Know what it is. Uh, in 60 days. Uh, sick time is it's 150 hours, right? Well, well she's got 125 sick time, so. Uh -huh. She's got nine and a half to ten months of full pay. Yep. What, the but question I'm asking, what's the limit? Or is there a limit? Or There's a max. But do we know what the max is? Offhand, no. We Does anybody have any idea what it is? I, I actually think the max for, for her with the length of service she has is 165 days of sick time. Maybe. Okay. One of the things that the max was set at 150 days. 
Was but that increased? Some of it's a sickness. I think it was. <coughs> some, weren't some of the things uh, that tracking? I mean, people here, if they were the in income match, she's using 145. Not changed. Sick time for by weekly payroll. She's using 140. Yeah, so it's got to be 140. According to the calendar that match. she attached as well. Yes. Okay. But we need to. We need to anticipate these retirements and, and put money in the budget to uh, cover we, these. We, we, we do. We don't. Well, we don't have any we, line we, item for this or anything. Um, yeah, we, we, we knew ahead uh, about each of the retirements that's been mentioned, and the budget office knows what their accruals are. Uh, <coughs> the issue is some of the earlier conversation within the department. We budgeted the year for this person. We anticipate they'll retire. If they retire in the year, their salary is still budgeted. So it's there. Um, if they don't retire, they don't retire. And it's, we'll go into the next year. If they retire early, then the budget would have... Well, this is all well and good for somebody that we're not going to replace. But when you have some place where you need somebody, and you do have to hire somebody. Well, then we That's have to hire them the after year. they retire. You have to put it in for the year because yeah. if they don't yeah. retire, Tom, you'd be in tough, to, tough distress. Retire, you so you put it in for the year. If they retire and you have to replace them, you've got the money there. The plan is not to have overlap, so you don't have that budget problem. Well, then you're always running short on staff. Well, you might. It, that, you're absolutely right. If you've got and a couple that's of people why we need out, to budget some money for this. Okay. And you can tell it. Um, if, if, if we go through and look at the employees approximately when all the highway and when yeah. people are going to retire, and you could budget money for that. But my we need to start budgeting is, money for the things that are going to come up. Your my perspective is well, in this climate, as a department head, if you know you got a retiree, you better have a plan on how to get the job done until that person's off the books and we replace them. Not an assumption that while they're on, <coughs> we're going to bring on another person and, and double up. Now, depending on the position, that certainly could be an issue. Um, if we had, if we hadn't brought uh, our finance manager on when we had three in there and Diane retired, you couldn't run it with two. If she's out for a number of months using her time, we'd have a problem. Uh, but we planned for that not to happen. Uh, Jim in the highway department's got a current problem with his staff that he anticipated. And I think he's up to three right now that he's short, but he hasn't asked us to hire three new people. Now he's had to bring some in part time, and some of it's based upon the need. If there's a snowstorm, you call him in. If there's not, then you limp along the way you are. We have got to have departments learning to work with what they have, and that's a big part of it. But, but we do know who's what the Our departments are. used to do work here. We didn't used to contract it out to yeah. the different uh, organizations. We used to do it. We used to we used to build our own sewer water. We didn't contract it out. We used to fix the things. And there's a good argument for owning over leasing and leasing over owning, depending on what the project is. We could never have a full staff to do the things that come up, all the things that we need. You know, it's like engineering services. I've been looking at that one for nine years. Um, and it's, it, it, I mean, we get so close to where it would be to our advantage to have an engineer, a licensed engineer. But when we start adding the space and the staff and the benefits for the frequency that we need one, it's better to pay one, a consultant, to get their reviews and their stamps. We, we grow the bureaucracy. Yeah, you got to be careful. No, I'd like to see the cost accounting on that. Well, uh, it's doable. I'm, I'm, I'm not putting it together right away, but we've looked at those. And, I mean, there are positions we have to have. Uh, the easiest to me is always highway. You've got X number of runs, you need snowplow drivers. You got guys out, you got a storm, you better have people you can call in. You've got to have the bodies. Uh, some of the other expertise that we use when we need it, to own it 12 months a year, could be expensive. Benefits are killer. So I mean, it's, it's always something I think we need to look at, Tom. And the big thing is what our needs were five years ago are different than they, either they were different five years ago than now, they'll be different five years from now. So it's, yeah. it's well, I don't see them decreasing, not, not as we continue to expand things. Um, engineers, uh, I mean, 
we've reduced our cost for consulting engineering <coughs> services enormously. Having Scott, who is an engineer, even though he doesn't have his license, uh, he is a, a engineer, doesn't have his, his uh, uh, stand, uh, saves us an enormous amount of time. So, you know, that was one of the reasons why you hired him, and uh, we were able to attract him away. We had to do that. <coughs> anyway, relative to Diane, that's her story, and we would have a resolution for her um, next time. If anybody has, did she reference the map in her? Yeah. So I'm going to make sure the map's in the resolution. Uh, this has all been calculated already, right? The, yes. The, yep. the sick time amount that she's going to have on vacation. And obviously subject to being out sick tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, that's what they do in that office. Same with the others. Um, you might want to change the first line to <coughs> she joined the town staff in March 1983. Joined. Uh, what is that on? The first line. For, uh, her letter? Oh, no, the resolution? On the, on the resolution. Oh, I wasn't even you there. You just printed out the new resolution. Yep. And it should be joined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, informational meeting dates. Hard to believe, but here we are. Uh, Deborah has gone through the calendar, drafted these dates. There were some issues with uh, facilities, which is why she had to... Um, move Wallace Hill down to make Courier. I can't give you the specific replay on that, but there was a reason. Uh, uh, we had to move it to from Wallace Hill as a site to make Courier. So or, is that is that building no good anymore? Um, <laughs> I don't think that was the reason there was a conflict in trying to get it scheduled. There's no problem with the building. Well I I, I there's a group that meets that. there and <coughs> we, we push it's we it meets there every Monday is that what you're saying? Uh, I think so, and we've canceled them, and you know, you get one or two people may come, uh, I think she felt rightfully so, those one or two probably could go to make Curry and we don't interrupt that group again. Uh, but well, anyway, that's the rationale. Uh, I, I, I disagree with that, and I, you know, maybe we have to have it on Tuesday, I don't know, but you, you say you, you know, here you're going to have it in each district of the town, and seven is totally out, and you've got two and three. South Plattsburgh and Cliffhaven, both in District 3. And we don't need anything at the town hall. We meet here all the time. I have to, I have to agree with Tom. Uh, we have traditionally used these meetings as a way where we went into, the, we went into those communities and met in those areas. And, uh, you know, it, 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 we don't, they don't serve the purpose for us to say that East Morrisonville and West Blasburg uh, come on over to the town hall for a meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're here tonight, I don't see East Morrisonville and West Blasburg here. Okay, and, and it defeats the purpose. I think we go to, we go to the, their community and we advertise that we're in their community and that's what we need to do. Um, so you would have us work harder to find the time when we can go to Wallace Hill. I'm not sure I understand <coughs> East yes. Morrisonville, West Plattsburgh. You want to do one in East well, Morrisonville and not the town hall, or where would you do that last one on June 23rd? If not at the town hall, I don't, I don't, I don't say it. I don't know what, what building that's available. Well, why wouldn't we meet in? Why wouldn't we East Morrisville Rec Center? Yeah. You, you meet in the East Washington Rec Center, and after that meeting, you go over and meet in the West Blacksburg, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Catherine Hayes building. Mm -hmm. And that's one I don't know if I haven't stepped from that building in a long time. Uh, that's what I think. That's what I think the purposes of those meetings always were. It was a little bit of a double sword for us to get in the buildings too and see how they looked. And see what they looked like. Uh, yes, absolutely. But I mean, it's like I mean, how do you think it would go over if we said, well, you know, why don't we just combine South Blacksburg and Cliff Haven and we'll just, you know, have that <coughs> meeting over at South Blacksburg? Okay. 
I'm I, I got a feeling we might. I got a feeling we might. Would the would the group get a little push back on that? Would the group be uh, out of Maybe the Harry. out of the Wallace Hill area at 7:45 if we did make courier first? I, I will have to find out. That's right. Yeah. Because right. uh, usually they meet early, so maybe if we met that May Courier at 7 on the 28th. And also, uh, uh, I don't know what group it is, but, right. Right. but by June 23rd, they might not be meeting. Well, my other thought is we're, we're really only give, we're only allowing for about 30 minutes in each of these locations. Yeah. I mean, that's that's not a significant amount of time. Right, but we, we historically have, like Cumberland had, uh, Never let it, it always goes over an hour, so we have yeah. that one at the the latter part of the evening. No, no, I, okay, I, I, so that one that one will allow for running over. Same thing with Cliff Haven, Cliff Haven is going to be end. No, no, I, rec I recognize that part of it, but if, <coughs> if take the Wallace Hill area, if I'm looking at that and you're giving me to 745 and I know that you're going somewhere else, my interpretation is I'm seeing these folks for half an hour, you know, I, I would rather see us slide that back a little bit to to give you know a more even amount of time for individuals to make it equitable you know to, so we're not going okay we've got about five ten minutes to get over to the other side of town for one of these things i realized that our meetings start at seven you know well, regularly started at 6 30 but, but, but that's what I'm, but that's what i'm saying though it, it, you know to be more equitable to the locations mm -hmm. you know so we're gonna and, <clears> and, and <throat> great that we have a good turnout in Kermel head but if I'm a resident of the town and I'm looking at the schedule, I'm already looking at I'm getting this amount of time versus one that doesn't have an end time to it, really. That's true, but in practice, maybe two people will go. Uh, and but but I would argue of, perception of, is reality. There's a lot of instances where nobody will show up. I, I, I realize that, but just because we've done it that way doesn't mean that's the way we should be doing it. So, I, Point will take it. You know, and, and again, to advertise it, perspective, you know, from, you know, a, a variety of areas and stuff like that. So. Uh, also, I did a quick look at my master calendar. And I've got on June 23rd a question mark for a federal primary, which if that's the case, we couldn't even use June 23rd. Well, we depend on mm -hmm. That we could, I guess. It would depend on... It should be the 24th. It's usually on Tuesday. It's Tuesday, yeah. not Monday. It would be the 24th. Uh, that's correct. Fifth. Um, I will have Deborah follow up with uh, seeing about when we can get to Wallace Hill. Um, if I'm not in favor of kicking people out. I'm just saying maybe later in the year they wouldn't be meeting. Yeah. Or as... As Mike pointed out, maybe they finished at a certain time. You could meet after that. To me, that's secondary, though. To me, I want more time for all of the locations, period. Well, really, what you would do then is just meet at each one of these places separately yeah. and not have two a night. Or, 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 or shift it slightly earlier is all. That's, that's my recommendation, is that we shift it slightly earlier to allow for a more equitable yeah, representation of the board. Yeah, some, something yeah. to that effect. You're going to be there from 645 to... Uh, I wouldn't mind making it at 630. I wouldn't mind either. We're going to these places and they're cold and it's warmer earlier in the day. I'm, so, I'm, unfortunately, given the past history, I would <coughs> suggest we do start at 645. We're putting an hour in there. Well, you're not because you're going to travel part of it. Right, but the message going, if we're worried about perception, we've now given folks an hour. That's the, the, the and I think we're six, really sitting yeah, for an the, hour the, by ourselves. The 645, that's fine. And yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so 645 and 745. Yeah. Um, I kind of, does look like I'd like to see Katie go uh, earlier and go to say, uh, it was a uh, May Courier after because uh, it's, it's colder out there in Cadio than it is in May Courier. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The same, on June 9th, we get Treadwell's okay. Mills first and Cadio after. Well, that's, I'm, I'm suggesting we change the schedule, see? <laughs> it's not to wear your wool socks. No, you want Cadio. You want Cadio. Um, and we'll, we'll look at. Um, uh, Catherine Hayes, East Morrisonville Park. Mm -hmm. 
Can we dedicate some time to each on the 23rd? Yep. And, I t and I'm not taking any for granted that this will be advertised in the press republic. Mm -hmm. And on a website. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, we will work with that a little more and get it to you. Um, number five. I'm <clears throat> We, we have the need to fill a vacancy for an alternate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, we've spoken with Pat and Shane. Um, I think Pat would be an incredible member. Um, he would represent uh, the Wallace Hill area, something we haven't uh, been able to uh, easily do. Uh, brings a lot of expertise with his uh, work in the military. He was, put in his we, he was very interested. I actually called around Pat. He has a, <coughs> a background dealing with explosives, etc. Um, in the Navy. And we had a meeting with Paramount. And the one thing that I thought we were missing, we had every, and a few plus chairs around this table. We had all the King's horses and men, but the town didn't have any real expertise about explosives. And I just asked so you're thinking come when we have all these run-down homes that we can't get rid of? Is that what you're saying? I, 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 I didn't say that, Tom. Uh, and, and Pat sat in on that, and he, he really represented him and us extremely well. Uh, he's excited. He said he would be more than willing to <coughs> participate. Everyone knows that's plenty of uh, wisdom. I think he'd be a great Yes. Has no agenda that he brings to the table. Yeah. No, no business in the table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you will see a resolution <coughs> for that. Um, and in the term, you've got that down pretty good? Uh, I've got what was given to me. I haven't researched it. Um, to the best of my knowledge, that is correct. I don't remember offhand what it is. Your term. <coughs> Sounds he's, still, he's still in one, so I'm not sure if we're sure it's... I don't know if it's or. right. I don't know if it's uh, completing the existing term because we have to do that. I thought it was four. Where where we ran into trouble was giving people new terms. Can't do that. Uh, I'm just looking well, through. If, if we do it now, it's five years. It's five years, and I don't know if that's correct. Well, his expires 2018. I thought he was replacing Matt's. Yeah. Because Matt's the most recent person. This is yep. the This is too old. His would, his would be four years. If he's filling that spot. He's not replacing Matt because Matt went on as a regular. He was he was on uh, alternate. So it, Pat would be an alternate. But that's what I'm saying. Matt from my understanding, Matt was the most recent alternate to move up to the board, leaving a vacancy for an alternate, which he is now Taking over. That was my understanding. It looks like his term expires this year, the end of this year. Could Matt be wrong. Rogers. Okay, so it should be told the end of this year. And it wouldn't matter if Matt if Matt were an alternate and he moved up and he moved up to become permanent. Okay, you're making a new alternate position. No, you can't do that. We're running into trouble with stag terms. It has, it has it's got to fill the vacant term until that ends, and you can reappoint. Him. You can't start another term. Then we run into real problems with each reappointment. Marty is for three years. Yeah, people the assume the the, 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 the way that of match, their match term, the person they're filling. The end correct. Yeah, correct. Okay. Okay. So, so, that term. so he would, he would be a, he would be appointed at the end of this year, and then it would be up for a three-year appointment. Correct. Yeah. So the, the eighteen. Begins. I just want to make sure. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up. Alternate is it really supposed to be there five years? Sounds like somebody made a mistake. So we will check on that before you see that resolution. We all finish check five years. They shouldn't. They did. I was favor one, but I got voted out. Number six. Yeah, number six. Um, I don't know, I don't recall with this one what you got for background information. Um, this is just uh, a bit of an infomercial. There is a Clinton County waterfront revitalization grant that's available. We would propose to uh, apply for some 
funding to do a, a review of the Lapeer Lane property. We've talked about that a number of times, uh, trying to make some determinations about the SHPO issues with that property. Uh, back in 2012, we did some preliminary review uh, then to <coughs> determine what to do. Um, we don't want to confuse that with the waterfront revitalization grant that we have. That's to focus on a uh, master plan, if you will, for the 26 miles of waterfront. This would be a component of that, begin to do some more work there. Uh, and we want to dovetail that with what's going on at the county level, what Melissa Lippier and the city is doing, and so on. In our own master plan, our master recreation, we've addressed those topics, but we don't have a plan that is focused on our waterfront and, and developing that for recreational, tourist reasons, etc. So uh, <coughs> this is something we're, we're looking at, we're working on, and you may hear more about it. I just well, wanted I think, to make sure you get I, it. I think it's very well put by Phil, is, is what the objectives would be. Yep. And those would be the objectives I think we would want to have you hit that part. I think so. I, um, I had some conversations with Phil today. Um, this is a topic, as a planner, that he is passionate about, along with the bike trails and a variety of comparable topics. Um, and, and you try to do it when you can, but there's a job you pay him to do in that planning office, working with site plan review and so on and so forth. And we got to make sure that doesn't get the back seat mm -hmm. or some of these other things that are good and they're exciting, but well, but the money have two if people the money is available <clears throat> because of the way the grants are set up, and and Melissa is saying this is a good a good possibility. We would be foolish not to go ahead and try to get this. Yeah, it doesn't mean we're going to be able to do it this year. I mean, it's obviously just another study, but. Uh, and you have to have that in order to get the money to do it. And you need to be prepared plan for to get the grants anyway, and that's something we don't have, that re revitalization should help with. Can I tangent just for a moment? It's okay. my understanding that we're, what, two years into the Town of Plattsburgh Comprehensive Plan? Mm -hmm. Approximately. That sounds right. From, no. from my or year four, you know what is what is the what is the general status of those projects? Because I, I'm one. Yeah, plans are great, but action is better. And again, I'm not for against you know any of of the proposals here. I mean, if there's great opportunity and there's community buy-in, phenomenal. But I don't want to see another study that's cost some money, you know, clipped in a three-ring binder sitting in the situation room. <laughs> so uh, I, for one, would like to see us recommit to, to some status reports on things like the <coughs> comprehensive, the recreation, uh, and if we're going to do this, that it adopt a timeline for some status reports from time to time so the board knows where it stands. Otherwise it just becomes another great thing that we, you know, grabbed a grant and we... Well, this is, a, this is, this, okay, you got the thing. Now this is a step towards getting what we wanted in terms of the thing, and it also goes along with the Saranac River Trail. Right, but... But in, if you read in here, it says, eventually this mini park would also connect to the future Saranac River. Well, eventually could be a 2020, 2050. Like or never. When's the, exactly. When's the eventually? Okay. So I, 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 I just would like to see a timetable established and then have a status update committee, you know, and kind of ushering of that, those things along. Part of that will be driven by this waterfront grant. Sure. The waterfront grant is going to talk about what we're going to do along the Saranac and, and that in turn will be driven by the Saranac River Trail. Not all, the Saranac, not all of the Saranac River in the town of Plattsburgh is going to be... Uh, no, I, I get that, but what I'm saying trail. is we have all these other plans that are potential overlays to one another, though, yeah. and I'd like to see where they all you know, are, are kind well, of conver are converging together. No, well, this one's a real, real good one because it would go with that, but also already goes with the, the, the Northern Canoe, uh, which is already in existence. And one of the things they wanted to do there was to put a lean-to or something there where people could stay. So I think it has a number of facets that would, would behoove us to, to go for, forward with this study. But I, 
I agree with you that we need to set some dates and, and have some kind of goals and, and, and that's and what and also see where I the overlays suggested are. when we had the comprehensive language plan that a committee be formed or stay <clears> on <throat> to give us annual updates of that, which is what the state uh, requirements were supposed to be, that we would have annual updates of our comprehensive language plan to see where we're at and what, where we should go and what should be changed. So I'm, I'm totally in favor of that. So again, it, I think there's some really interesting stuff here, but there's really some other interesting things going on. I just want to see where they all connect. You know what I mean? So. Duly noted. Follow up on many times, though, many times, if you don't act now, you don't have a chance of getting these. And you know that the the now that we're in a regional thing, if we don't put these things in ahead of time, we can't. We we can't get the vote. We don't have a chance of getting anything. And we we pulled back a degree, not that things weren't important. We can only do so many things. Sure. There's less and less money more and more of the money that's available is becoming extremely competitive and you're, you're right on the button. If you don't have a master plan for what you're trying to get money to put into a construction phase, forget it. And that needs to be tied into the master plan. You need, you need to see the correlation. Uh, we haven't had a lot of money to throw at these things. Uh, there are a lot of grants that require uh, pretty significant matching components. And you can do that sometimes in kind, but we what? haven't had a lot of money or time and resources to put into that. So we we pulled back a little, but it's not dead. Mm -hmm. And I think an update status is a good idea. When we get in front of us again, you know, what are the dreams that we should be working on, the visions, and be working on it. I, I, so we'll, 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 we'll work on it. I think we can get something and then keep it alive. Um, okay. Uh, good conversations. Uh, the good news is, as you look at the waterfront grant project, as you hear about the the uh, waterfront revitalization grant that we do have, we obviously are still doing things. And the bad news is we have a small, small human <coughs> number of human resources. The good news is it's a small number because it's those same people that remember master plan set. Uh, our master plan is pulled out a lot. It's a living document. I often hear during the day, we have to because it's in the plane. This is why we're going this direction. Um, so, but, but we are pulling that together. Some of what, what we want to do with um, having um, <coughs> Melissa McManus join us on Friday is to let her role where she oversees the county get us under that. We're not a formal part of that bigger picture either. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's, you know, it's doggy paddle going in the right direction. Um, lastly, on this part of the agenda, I had asked Marty and Gerard uh, to give us a status report on the ambulance uh, uh, contracts, uh, negotiations, uh, the year, collectibles, numbers of calls. <clears throat> has changed recently. So anything you can share with the board and get us up to date? Okay, uh, I do have uh, uh, an update on the collectibles uh, for uh, the uh, 2013 year. Um, and, uh, the total revenue remitted to the town from uh, Morrisonville for 2013 was 174,215 dollars and 11 cents. Uh, the collectibles during that same period from CBPH was 285,695 dollars <coughs> and 65 cents. The total received in 2013 was 495,000. $910.76, which was a total of $18,089.24 uh, less than uh, what we had budgeted uh, for receivables in the year. And uh, what, it, what it reflected in particular was a significant decrease in the Morrisonville 
Campbell's uh, side on their receivables. Uh, in part, uh, the number of uh, transports were down uh, fairly significantly. Um, I don't have that number uh, with me. I can go uh, to my office uh, and get it, but I would tell you that the, the, the number was down uh, approximately 15 percent from uh, from where it was prior year. The number of calls was down 15. The number of transports. Yeah, I'm just kind of curious. Was the income down 15 percent? Did they kind of match up in that sense? Um, compared. Give me a second. I can go back. <coughs> the decrease in income from their um, from Morrisville in the prior year. No, it was down uh, a total of $16,000, which would have been a little less than 10%. Okay. Marty, do we get a call, do we get a, um, call volume versus a dispatch? Like, you know, number of calls made, but, you know, actual dispatch. For we, we asked um, Clinton County Emergency Services to give us a printout of the, the 911 calls so we can compare the calls that were made to the center with the uh, bills that we are that we received, the calls we received from the provider, okay. uh, because there are instances where there would be one 911 call made, um, but there were there were multiple persons on the scene, mm -hmm. and we might get a bill from one of the providers for five patients, and none of them transported. But yeah. there was only one 911 call. Okay, that 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 kind of makes sense. That's what I was trying to do. Well, that's what, part of what we yeah. we have suppressed. We we've, we've challenged their their call numbers. Right. <coughs> because we said, look, if you if, if an ambulance goes out to a automobile <coughs> accident and, and and you tend to four people uh, at, at that ambulance site, mm -hmm. okay, uh, that that really is one ambulance call. Okay. Even if the call you might you might transport you might transport two people to the hospital, but that's one ambulance that's transporting two people to the hospital. You might you might transport nobody. Mm -hmm. We still pay you for right. one one right. ambulance call. Right. Okay. But we're not paying four insurance four. payments. It's one call. Right. This, is, this is what they're claiming. They're <coughs> claiming well, they're they're all billables, but they're not billables to the extent of what our contract for calls for us to pay them. And we're, we're paying them for an ambulance run. We're not paying them for a, a billable, billable patient. So uh, we, we, we both work very hard on that to make sure that we are, we're only paying for what we, we should be paying by contract. And on the calls, just to give you an idea where the, it wasn't the prior year that was the problem. The, the, the real drop, if we go back to 2011, in 2011, Morrisonville's revenue from collectibles was 289,000, and in 2012 it was 190, and in 2013 it was 174. So they've had a declining re re amount of receivables of, of collectibles. Okay, the hospital, on the other hand, what happened was in 2011 they had 292. Which was, I mean, <coughs> Morrisville had a number that was almost comparable to the hospital's number, which was like, you know, that blew our minds. We said, wow, okay. Uh, interestingly, the hospital has gone to a new, uh, a new collection agency. Mm -hmm. they, okay. Now, their, their receivables in 2012 went up about thirty thousand dollars. They went up to three hundred and twenty-two, so there was some improvement there. But they were back down to two eighty-five this past year, and they they made the decision to go to a to go to a different provider. They're actually going to go to the same provider that Morrisonville uses. They believe that that provider will will increase their collectibles. So they're they're going to go, they're going to go to a different a different. What provider. is the net cost to the town for two thousand and thirteen? In 2000. What, what we pay the, what we pay, what we get. What's our net 
the taxpayers pay for any of those services. Do you know what the contract was with CBPH? Because we have a contract pending, or not CBPH, more of all, we have a contract pending with CBPH, right, yeah. uh, which which we worked very hard at, and I think is a, it's a very good deal. Big improvement. It's a big improvement. We kept the increase in the contract down significantly lower than what CBPH had initially asked for. Uh, we took a, uh, a look at what we paid last year and what we took into collectibles, and we used that as an arguing point for why the maximum amount of the contract should be lower from what CBPH was proposing, and they, they did go along with us. So uh, we do have a set amount with CBPH of $575,000. That will be the, the net cost. Do we know what it was last year? Uh, last year, uh, as near as I can figure, with what we paid them in taxes and what we paid them in collectibles, if we got the collectibles, but if we added those two numbers together, it was it was around five hundred thirty-one thousand dollars. That's what it cost uh, five thirty-one. The next year will cost us five seventy-five. Five seventy-five. But but that's mm -hmm. minus the what? Right. No, it's the collectibles. That's, the collectibles came to us. They were they were part of the, the cost of, of doing business as it were. So um, you you have to include those. Now with CBPH is going to be keeping collectibles, but they're going to be keeping them up to a maximum amount of five hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Once they reach that <coughs> point they have to return every dime to us. All right, so uh uh, we're getting regular reports on how, the, how many they They're going to be yeah. giving us regular reports, regular accounting reports. This new this new uh, collection agency, that's all they do is ambulance districts as well. So there'll be no mixing of mixing of funds. Um, so it's a little bit more than it was last year, but we're, if they collect over a certain amount, we may get some rebate. That's right. So we could be less than last year. Yeah. Actually, Actually, their contract will should be less than what it was. tax tax liability tax wise to the to the residents of the town of Foster went down from two hundred and forty five thousand to two hundred and one. Yeah, because the only tax liability the, that the taxpayers have is two hundred one thousand dollars. Last year it was two hundred forty five. Yeah. But right. there is there you have to take into account how much their they the total cost of the contract could be, which is set at five seventy five. In other words. We don't know what the total cost of the contract is because we don't know what the receivables will be. Okay. If they do a good job on receivables, mm -hmm. the cost that we will have been have paid them will actually go up. But our net cost that the town of Glassford will be billed <coughs> is down to 201. Mm -hmm. okay. If they do a really good job on receivables, if they get to that 575 75 figure, then the town's going to share in the in the surplus receivables. Not share. The town gets it all. Well, that's what, we, I, we what I meant with. Okay. Will yeah, we, we'll right. we get? Will we get a, a piece of the which will which will help to offset any future that. increase moving forward? So, uh, but we 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 believe that that arrangement uh, allows us to fix those costs. At a, at a better level. Much better way to do it. Now, we, we've eliminated the uh, problem with uh, going to the city or to other towns. They do that. Uh, we remember we had the problem and yeah. then going up to the Anamora, they had. Well, they, they put extra and they put extra ambulances on, uh, and they, uh, they have uh, both extra ambulances and they have their transport. Uh, facilities and they'll use those ambulances if they need to provide backup service into the city. But they, the other thing, Tom, they're, is not, they're not running the ambulances. <coughs> with a set, with a set amount. Pay, we used to subsidize that. Yeah, but with a set amount, in a certain sense, we don't care. They could service the world. That's right. We're, we're paying so much money. And so they're incentivized not to do that. And we have a time limit <coughs> that is that we measure each month on all our calls. Uh, we, get, we get a report and uh, we have a maximum time limit of 15 minutes uh, for any call. And so, for example, they, they could run a call out to Cumberland Head, and uh, you know, if, if, if there were to be 15 minutes taken between that call to 911 and the time that ambulance arrives, we want to know why it took 15 minutes. Uh, they, really, they really run uh, an average. Uh, their average will be somewhere between uh, seven and uh, eight, I think eight and a half minutes on their calls. And there's still language in the contract. The one place where they will run higher than that um, 
would would be uh, if they're if they're providing backup for Morrisonville and they run to Katyville, their call might be longer than that. Or if they run out to South Plattsburgh, their call sometimes can be longer than that. But in both those cases, they've got really very good first responder units mm -hmm. that are on the scene yeah. and they're 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 <coughs> you know, they're there and stabilizing yeah. patients. They do a good job. Of that. So we're not penalizing them if they yes. Get there's their still language. The there's still language in there that if they if there is a persistent problem. It's not for the one time. The one time that they get okay. out there in 16 there, there, minutes. There, there's my answer, because we're not ordering pizza. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so, right. You know, if it's not there in 15 minutes or less, I get it for free type right. of thing. But, no. you but, know, if, but if, if you're telling me the average is between <laughs> this amount and this amount. You die. Oh, no. and yeah. We're not, and we're not, but we're not going by, we're not going by an average number either. Right. No, I get that. if we've got, if we had six of those in there, something's wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we, we can't right. live with that. Okay. It's got, it's got to be better than that. But. Like for example, they may have one, and it was uh, you know it was 18 minutes. And why was it 18 minutes? And it was because there was a, a violence incident at home, and they can't enter until the police clear them. And, mm -hmm. and so they you know they just in a cover letter they tell us the reason it was 18 minutes before they were on scene was they were on standby. They were down the road. They were at the end of the driveway, but they couldn't uh, approach the house until the police uh, cleared them to approach you know, that kind of thing. Well, I have to say, I commend the two of you. Uh, yeah. for a fantastic job over these from years. Way. Yes. Uh, from when we first had this big mess and what you've already you've done to get this in good shape. Well, this uh, is a real big step. The set. <coughs> in the incentive for collection. Yeah. And, and, and I, we're, we're hoping that it'll set a pattern for, for negotiation with Morrisville's got to fall next year. You know, and, and ultimately, I think, Mart, I'll, I'll go out on the limb here. Ultimately, I think we'd like to have one provider in the town of Plattsburgh rather than two. But uh, that's going to depend on who can who can show us that they can provide the service. Because, again, that 15-minute time schedule is hard to maintain by with either one of the two providers unless they're willing to invest some money into a station. So it, it, it comes a problem, but we're not really, we're not willing to... to uh, eliminate that part of the contract. We have a situation where the Morrisonville uh, squad, mm -hmm. um, it costs, on paper, it costs more per run for Morrisonville to provide a run. Uh, but the reason for that is they provide fewer runs. Mm -hmm. So those costs are spread over a, a, a fewer number. Uh, at the same time, if we went to one provider Right. The hospital, if they were the provider, would be able to do it more cost effectively, <coughs> uh, clearly, uh, because it's a greater number. The problem is, uh, the hospital, the hospital is not, they're not oriented to, to doing the training, to providing the EMT uh, development that, that the <coughs> volunteer groups do. Mm -hmm. And what's really happening is uh, the EMTs are born out of the out of the emergency squads that, that exist. Uh, you know, in some cases they're an arm of fire departments, in other cases they're completely separate from the fire departments. But they're you know they're volunteer they're volunteers that are uh, considered by the citizenry to be associated with the fire departments. <coughs> and, and Morrisonville's EMT squad is kind of the granddaddy. Yeah. They, they're, they're, the, they're the group that does the bulk of the training mm -hmm. uh, and stuff. And we have some groups, I mean, Katieville, for example, they have, they have a great squad, you know. <coughs> Cliff Hay has a great squad uh, on this. And they, they incubate, they provide these people. And the hospital sits back and cherry picks them and hires them uh, to go to work and to, and to, and to, uh, to work on the ambulances and whatever, but they're not they're not developing them. They're not they're not doing that stuff. And it, you know, <coughs> my great fear would be if we if if we jumped into that uh, situation where we were to 
seek to take advantage of what might be a short-term pricing advantage, I think in the long run, we'd lose that pricing advantage because we'd be headed down a road of fully paid service. And we would not only be paying for the people who would be riding on the equipment, we would end up having to be paying for the training. People. There isn't nothing if you have only one provider, you don't have a lot of negotiation. You don't have a lot of negotiation. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Uh, okay. Yep. That, anyone have any other questions? On, no, thank you very much. Cap. <coughs> huge yeah, cap. Huge cap. Really, you have to yeah. You guys are making great progress. And it's funny to see the reports come in that you, you, you don't much have to ask where that comes the letter explaining because they know they're going to be asked. The letter gets it's yeah. proactive. Yep. So that's the only, now, the one thing we have to do this year. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that we have already informed CBPH is uh, we're looking for a much better uh, job on, uh, on their reporting. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been, they've been a little weak on their, on their reporting. Uh, we bring them a sample of Morrisonville and we show them. We say, now, look, if they can do it and they get their report in, I mean, the second or third of the month we get the report for the prior month. That's good to have two providers. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Under drafts, we have the minutes of the previous um, meeting. Yeah, on 1489. That's incorrect because it was tabled and it should have a motion to table there. Uh, though I think it is. It does table. Uh, the second set of motions are the ones to table. They are indicated as such. Well, we'll fix that. Also, it has to say that. Yeah, well, we'll fix that. Otherwise, it looks as if yep. we actually passed that. Got two sets of motions. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that the other things were added in, like we amendments. I see that all that was in there. So Otherwise, it looks good. If you see other than that, please let us know. Uh, we have a resolution that was tabled in nine. We need to bring it back the way it was. I have a recommendation to amend it to clarify the issues. And if we can get that one read. Whereas Pete Gwinn, machine equipment operator two from the highway department has announced his intent to retire effective March 27, 2014. Therefore, be resolved that the town board with appreciation for the many years of service that the town of Foxburg accept his resignation and place on file Mr. Gwinn's letter of retirement from the New York State Retirement Board. And it be further resolved that on behalf of the town board, the supervisor sends a letter of congratulations thanking Mr. Gwinnett for his dedication and service to the town. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the highway superintendent and a copy placed in Mr. Gwinnett's personnel file. A motion. So moved. Uh, Mr. Renner, second. Second. Mr. Cashman. Discussion. Now, what we need to do is amend the first whereas to read August 28th. Yeah, okay. And then it aligns with his letter that that is his date of retirement, and the rest of it from March is simply the days that he will be using his uh, crew time. that we amend it for August 28th. Okay, we will change the first result to August 28th. Is that uh, <coughs> for you, yes. Gerard and Mike? Yes. Any other discussion on the resolution? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Uh, yes. Mark Manick? Yes. Michael Cash? Yes. Gerard Renner? Yes. Turning back. Yes, it passes as amended. So this one's only a five month payout. <coughs> no. Yep. Yep. Next, you have uh, reports from codes and, and zoning. They've been busy. Um, highway department. <coughs> and they're going to be busy midweek with a big snowstorm. Uh, planning department's monthly report as well. Uh, I, do you have any idea if I'm, well, you should check on the um, highway department on the, uh, all, all the overtime? That you've been I'm sure they've been keeping up with it because... I don't think they're... Uh, last that I checked, I mean, things did slow down a bit, thank God. Um, last that I checked, they were within the budget. Okay. 
a, a, a long way to go. There, there's no panic yet for that sure. salt or sand. There's a ways to go. Um, town clerk's monthly report is in there. I don't know if you have anything of rookie this evening concerning that. Um, yeah, I, uh, Ricky, um, I asked you the last time, have we, have we gotten it out so that we can uh, uh, do licenses now? Are we able to sell them? Have we been, able, have we been selling them? Well, we haven't sold any yet, but it's, it's there and working. It's there and working? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Good. Okay, so just nobody has come in, the season's passed. No, we haven't given an official test run to see if it's going to work or how it's going to print or anything, but it's up and running. Uh, I've come by my fishing license. You've been in to get a fishing license yet? Uh, no, uh, you know, I don't get any licenses. <laughs> um, Rick, what do you think, I, I mean, this has been a problem, it's been a problem with other vendors, I've heard <coughs> stories, you can't get them at, you know, some of the stores. Do you think in the, of interest, it would be... Uh, good to put to something article. in there that we're pleased to announce the town of Plattsburgh now has supporting licenses we're, available. We're I, ready. I told Dick from Gander Mountain over there because they haven't got theirs up and running. That's why I'm thinking. Yeah, puts, no, I've already notified. Put something in the paper to tell the public. I haven't had anybody come in to buy one yet. Right, but they're going a long time. We're not selling. Yeah. I think we should send Ricky out with the bell. Well, I think it's worthwhile yeah. though in the press release. The town's right. We're we're sandwich boards. Let the word go, let the word go forth that the town of Plattsburgh is now issued. Interest. Money is being spent on the town of Plattsburgh. So we can work on that. Give me some figures. I'll be glad to draft a paragraph for that. Uh, yay! Hallelujah! God. <laughs> Um, next is the uh, Diane's draft. That will be uh, an amendment, I guess, on the um, first whereas, as Tom noted. We discussed that one at length, I think. Um, we, we're going to have uh, two resolutions from our highway department. I don't know if anyone from highway committee wants to make any comment on that tonight. Just let it go as it is. Well, I, uh, according to the Highway City Senate, there is a budget for mm -hmm. this year. Now, I know that doesn't mean anything now, as you said. But well, this is the tr well, yeah, um, because you have to have the money more than just having the budget. But this is the truck, I believe, they uh, delayed purchasing last right. year. Yeah, yeah, they pushed it. Uh, one, one more thing, long on the issue of highway. Um, Tim had relayed to me that there was some interest. Uh, albeit maybe just slight interest on the part of the highway department in a, in a vehicle that water and sewer has. The, uh, the Ford box truck that they have out back used to be Dave King's. It's an older truck, but it's better than the one that they're using right now for their steam jenny. They'd like to take, they like, well, they're, like I said, there's some interest in buying that from water and sewer, taking the box off it. The box is in perfect shape. It could be used for storage of equipment. And the truck, they would put a, a, a bed on it and use it for their steam jetty because it's, again, in a lot better shape than the one they're using right now. So there was that discussion that was, was held. I didn't meet with Scott to ask if they had come up with a price. Basically, from what I understand, they were waiting for a price from water and sewer. And the other thing was the hangar at the Old County Airport. Um, I did call uh, over to the county. The county's not interested in, in letting that go on the property that it sits on. They said that they don't want a utility building at the entrance to their, their park that they want to sell. But um, they did tell me that there was a bid that was placed and accepted on the building, told me what it was, and said that maybe Highway would contact this person and get it for just over. It was a nominal amount. I mean, that's a very, very minimal amount of money that was paid for that. They would have to move it, but it would give us the the storage area that we we've, we've always wanted and never had. And I, I'm not I, I don't feel comfortable letting out the, the the amount that I was given. But I did tell I did tell Jimmy if he wants to contact this person, the county said go ahead and contact him. Maybe you can offer him a little bit more than what he he paid for it, and it would be take it apart and move it. But it's it's a beautiful beautiful building. And it's something wanted to pull one for a long time. Too. Right. Well, they'd have to seven. they'd have to put down a, a slab or pave it. Rodney Brown said you you could put down tarmac and put it on tarmac and it would still serve the purpose. So there's some interest in that. 
Good. They're going to pursue it. I, I <coughs> gave them all the information I had, and they can they can look at. It. Good. Anything else with either of those? Uh, the next one is the Kevin Keene that we discussed at some length as well. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll get a date on this. Um, well, there is a date on the draft resolution and the second resolve as I skim down through this. Uh, for the first full pay period following approval. Uh, so that would be expected to happen somewhere probably, I don't know where this falls with the pay period, middle or end of March. Which, which one are you on? The key, yeah, okay. the draft resolution, the second resolve does have a date for that to take place. First full pay period following the resolution. Oh, that's the, <coughs> that's the letter. Um, then we have the draft for the appointment of Pat Duhane as an alternate. Uh, I will check on that term. To be sure. Um, we have two alternates. I don't do we have an active second? Well that's Charlie, isn't it? There are for the uh, zoning board of field. Yes. Three alternates. <coughs> but I think we've got uh, I think we've got uh, two vacancies. Who is yeah, Mike. One. I was I was a regular, regular member. Regular member. Matt and again, I'm working off an old, it's an old list yeah. here. Okay. I, 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 we'll, we'll follow up. There's there's no need. We we don't have the information in front of us. We'll make sure the date is uh, the right one, which that may be. But I got a feeling it may not. Um, the other item I, I I distributed to you. We'll have a resolution for the. Uh, parks and rec reports for um, January and February. I believe now I spoke of it this morning uh, as part of the team with the uh, activities in Lake Placid this weekend. In fact, we had a number of town officials and representatives and employees there supporting the town well, which was, which was very good. Marty was there. I don't know if you want to make any comments at this time about that or we just let it. There were actually, uh, I think, 12 uh, residents of the town <coughs> who were there. And uh, uh, I think it's fair to say that a good time was had by all. It was, uh, it was really a very well-organized uh, uh, program of activities. Uh, I know Mel was telling me her group uh, participated in the toboggan run. She, said she never knew that was there. She mm -hmm. said it was blast. She looks forward to doing more of that at some time in the future. She thought it was, it was great fun. Uh, then they, uh, I'm trying to think of what, I, what the other, oh, they went to the ice arena and they participated in a series of events that were in the ice arena, hockey skills and some curling and, and, and stuff like that, which they, which they thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, and then that was all followed by a reception. Uh, I don't think Mel and her, her group stayed for the uh, reception, no. and they left, they left at that. The other group uh, stayed for the reception. It was a very, very nice reception, very nice meal. Uh, they kept all the speeches to a real minimum, and uh, so it, uh, you yeah. know. Could you say the governor's goal to expose downstate to the upstate venues was uh, Well, what he, particularly what his goal was in particular was <coughs> legislators to expose the legislators, and he had, uh, he had uh, more than 10% of the assembly uh, people there, uh, and uh, you know, like one of the, one of the gentlemen that got up uh, commented that, uh, you know, he'd been in Lake Placid uh, before, but it had been a good number of years ago, and he was just, uh, you know, uh, astounded. To, uh, to see how what had happened in Lake Placid in the last 25 years mm -hmm. and how much he enjoyed being there and uh, enjoyed the activities that they participated. He challenged all the members of the assembly to go back and tell 10 people uh, mm -hmm. how much fun they had and what they had done and uh, what activities they participated in and 
to encourage them to go. And then one of the things he said, he said, you know, I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody. He said, uh, I've, I've gotten in the car and driven to neighboring states to vacation, uh, you know, winter vacation. And he said, driving up here, he said, I'm saying to myself, why? Why have I done that? You know, he said, this is where I, this is where I should come. You know, and he said, yeah. so he, it, was, it, it was a nice, a very appropriate uh, set of remarks, uh, and I think I think he was very genuine in what he, what he was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Even, um, if, even if they did give him the award for uh, for the, uh, I think he got he got he got one of the awards for the uh, bobsled run, the worst time for the bobsled run. <laughs> Now, which one did you compete in? Speed skating? Or? I, uh, <laughs> with this bum shoulder of mine, I didn't participate in any of the, any of the, uh, of those those before. Uh, he was there. Marty put a lot of miles on doing his woes. Okay, well, if Thank we have nothing much. else this evening, I'm going to adjourn us at 8.40.